Hey guys, MCU Collector here with another figure review. Next up is the Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse. We have a couple of different figures here. We have the Masters of the Universe Beastman from the 1987 film. We have the Masters of the Universe New Eternia Thunder Punch He-Man. And then here in the center, this is kind of the highlight, um, is going to be the New Eternia Skeletor with Havoc throne so i'm very excited about this this is going to be my first experience with masters of the universe now i'm familiar with he-man i've heard of him i'm sure i've seen some clips and snippets i may have seen an episode or two of the original cartoon but i don't really know about masters of the universe right we always know about he-man though like it, you know everyone's heard of he-man everyone's heard of skeletor i am familiar with the characters i don't know the characters if that makes more sense uh, but I've heard some really good things about the Masterverse figure, so I really wanted to check them out. So thanks to Big Bad Toy Store, I have these three here to, to check out for you guys and to show you guys and see what they're all about. So each one of these are actually in stock right now at Big Bad Toy Store, so links in the video description below to check out these specific figures, as well as all the Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse figures. So the packaging has updated on these single release ones, so those are pretty cool. Uh, but I'm excited to get into it and check it out. The Havoc Throne is going to be a pretty awesome set. Uh, but I'm really curious about these individual figures and what kind of what all the fuss is about because I've heard they are phenomenal figures. I see them all the time. I just because I didn't really know about them. Um, I never really picked them up until now. I have these to show you guys see what they're all about. Um, and hopefully you guys like them. Hopefully I like them. And then, you know, we got some really cool figures. So let's get into it. Let's take them all out of the boxes and see what we got. Gosh, I know it's probably not necessary, but I almost feel, don't feel right not going over the packaging and, and design. So the Mattel, the Masterverse packaging, the redesign of the packaging, I think looks really awesome. It really catches the eye as opposed to like that blue color that they had kind of with. They went and changed the shape. Mattel likes to do these odd shapes to their boxes, but looks really cool. I love the artwork on there. You can see, you know, He-Man is thunder punching Skeletor there. Looks pretty cool. Some art, nice artwork on the side. We get a nice cross sell on the back so we can look at some of the other uh, figures uh, from Masterverse. So you got like the Emperor Hordak, uh, Leech, and then you got Sky Clone, uh, Cyclone, excuse me, there. And then we get a couple of different looks at what the figure can do. So that is the uh, He-Man there. We got the Beast Man there from the 1987 film. I'm sure I've seen that film uh, probably when I was a kid. I just don't really remember it and I haven't gone back to see it since. But you guys let me know what you guys thought of the movie. We get the look at there, Beast Man. Um, and then we have here, and again, cross sell there. And you got a couple of looks to, to, to the figure. This one I wanted to get because he just looks like a cool, like, you know, beast monster guy. As opposed to like the, the deluxe Beast Man figure that they've also released. So um, that's why I wanted to get this one. He just looks really cool. Um, and then the... Th Havoc Throne and Skeletor. There's no window box to this, but we get some awesome artwork. So you got Skeletor sitting on the throne there. We get a look at Beastman. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. You guys will have to let me know. Um, and then the bio on the back reads, From deep within Snake Mountain, Skeletor rules from the Bone Throne, an ancient artifact crafted by the original inhabitants of Snake Mountain from the poisoned bones of Wyverns? Wyverns? Uh, the Bone Throne now serves as a conduit for Skeletor's Havoc Magic to seek out and capture the power of Grey Skull. So they call it the Havoc Throne because they think that sounds better as opposed to the Bone Throne. Um, not that that's a terrible name, but hey, you know, that's kind of what it is there. And then I think this is Panthor and Evil Lynn, right? Um, so there we go. So now let's go ahead and get these out of the bat, uh, out of the boxes and take a look. Okay, so I'm glad I talked about the packaging. So I opened up the Skeletor figure. Here's the best part. We get a single individual box for Skeletor. Like, how cool? I was not expecting that in the package. So boom, full on box package for Skeletor. There's like no cross sell on there. There isn't even a barcode because it's only available in that pack, but you get the full on display box. So collector friendly, if it's something that you want to repackage, put back in the box, you are more than welcome to do that. But that is awesome that they have that regular box. And then here for the throne, I haven't even opened this yet, but this thing is awesome. I mean, it's, it's like embossed or whatever. So you get the shape of all the, the the rocks and everything in there. It's a Skeletor there. So that is pretty cool. It looks like we just opened it up. It says Evil Lord of Destruction. Um, and there's some things going on in there. So some paper. It looks like we're going to have some assembly to do uh, with the throne. So we're going to kind of get all into that. Um, so that is pretty awesome. But the packaging, uh, top tier. Not that a lot of people care about the packaging. But I just think that it's really cool. So let's quickly go through Beastman and then He-Man. And we'll take a look at Skeletor and the Havoc Throne. 
Okay, so here we have the He-Man, Beast-Man, and Skeletor figures out of the package. And I can see how a lot of people have been saying really good things about them because the articulation is all there. The sculpting of it is all really nice. My thing is, is I'm just not familiar with the characters, so it's hard for me to kind of relate um, as it comes to some of these. But what I can do is I can appreciate good action figures, and that is exactly what we have here in front of us. So I'll quickly go through the accessories, and you guys are really going to need to help me out in the comments in terms of what the stuff is that comes with uh, He-Man, the Thunder Punch uh, stuff specifically. I feel like it's a callback to probably an old action figure from, from the 80s um, or whenever it was. Um, and it's it's probably that, and it, that's probably going to be how it's explained. So, but you guys let me know, because I'm a little confused on some of that stuff. In terms of accessories, Skeletor comes with an extra set of hands. So our, um, I didn't swap any of these around. We have a fist for the right, and then we have an open hand for the left. And he's got like a massive-ass thumb. Like, look at his thumb. Look how big it is. It's kind of weird looking. Um, there, he has a grip hand for the left already on the on the on the figure and then his right hand he's got like a grip hand with his index finger kind of pointing out and then he kind of he has the staff obviously there um beast man comes with a sword and then he also comes with an extra set of hands so i already swapped one set of hands out, one hand out uh, but he's got these two open hands and then he's got a pair of gripping hands he also comes with the sword uh, so the sword sheaths there on the side. And as we take a closer look at the figure, we'll, we'll kind of go through that. Uh, the Thunder Punch He-Man comes with a few different things. It comes with a lot more stuff, actually. He has two fists because he's got a punch, right? Um, and then he's got two grip hands. Um, so we have those there. He comes with the sword. He has this, like, shield piece that I think, you know, in combination with the sword, like even on the back of the, the package, um, it, it shows this. So this is how I know. Um, and it kind of makes sense because you have this spot right here where a sword would fit perfectly in there, right? So you can kind of do that and it makes for his weapon if, you know, you don't drop it. Um, so we have that there. We get these two, like, flame, t uh, like, type effects. They're just a bright yellow translucent plastic. Like, on the back of the package, it actually shows a little bit more of a fire color uh, to it. Well, I guess that's because of the orange harnesses that are on his arms. Um, kind of showing through. So bright yellow, uh, we get two. One to go on his right fist, one to go on his left fist. And you got to have the fist hands on there for it to properly kind of fit on there. Um, and then he comes with a couple of other pieces. And this is where it's going to be really confusing. Like, this reminds me of, you know those cap guns back from when we were kids? Like, those that grew up in the uh, the late 80s and the 90s know what those cap guns are. Uh, this is what this reminds me of. I don't know what this is. It's this gold color. Um, there's just kind of this ring and it, it has the two sides. It kind of looks like these are peg hole sides. Um, but there's two of these actually, because he has this yellow gold one. And then he also has this orange one, which matches the thunder punch armor that he has. So it clearly fits in there. Uh, right. So I don't know if this one's supposed to go in its place or this one's supposed to go in its place. I don't know which way it kind of goes around. It's in there. It doesn't do anything like this doesn't like spin around or anything like that. So I'm a little confused. I need your guys' help. You guys, please let me know what that is all about because I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to get in for a closer look at each one of these figures and we're going to quickly go through the articulation of each one because I just want to appreciate the figures themselves and not necessarily the characters that they rep rep represent because I'm not going to do that justice and I don't and I know that people are probably already going to be mad that I'm like not as familiar with He-Man. But again, this video is all about appreciating some good action figures. So, let's start off with Beast-Man. Okay, so an up-close look at Beastman. So this was an actual, like, person in a suit, because this is, again, based off the 1987 uh, movie. So that looks pretty good there. Good digital print um, for the faces there. He's got nasty yellow teeth. The eyes look good. Came out really nice. The sculpt of it is really good with all the hair and the fur going on. So I really like the way that came out looking. So really top-notch there. Uh, his armor pieces, they're all pretty rubbery. So you can kind of move them around. Like this chest piece here. It's something that you would clearly be able to remove. As you can see, it kind of pegs around in the back. So you can move, remove it around um, as you need. He does have this sword. It's just done in this kind of this darker gray color here. Uh, with a little symbol print it on there uh, but the sculpt of the sword looks pretty good he does have these gauntlet armor pieces these were actually loose um in the bag that came with that had the knife in it so th you know these are separate pieces you don't have to have them on there but i put them on there because it kind of makes sense um he's got the arm wraps in there and stuff um again some kind of armor here with like this loincloth type thing they're kind of free floating um so they don't really get in the way or anything like that um over here on his thighs he has this big armor piece so the thigh the hip pieces those are sculpted on there but the the on the lower part of the leg these are actually like a rubber piece that's on there 
Um, so it kind of freely moves around. It doesn't get in the way of the, like the knee articulation and stuff like that. And then you have the boot with a little bit of fur in there and some nice shading, uh, on the boot itself, because that gives it some nice color and texture to like the leather of the boot, which is really nice. So if you look good paintwork on there, uh, I am pretty impressed with that. So I like the way that came out looking, uh, came out looking really nice as I brighten it up here for you. So, uh, that is really cool. So I'm not going to remove any of the armor pieces, but, um, just know that, you know, those could be removed if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, so looking at He-Man here is He-Man doesn't seem to, seems to be a little bit shorter as you can see you know Beastman is quite a bit taller so I'm gonna have to adjust this camera down just a tad bit so we can see get a better look uh, but here we have He-Man um, and I've seen some criticisms on this head sculpt before and I think they've done a few different ones I think the revelations the Netflix show had a really good head sculpt but when it comes to like the new Eternia stuff the head sculpt that they use uh, something just seems a little bit off with it to me and I, I've seen that um, I, I've seen those, those comments and the feedback a little bit I can see what what they're saying i don't have a whole lot to kind of really compare it to uh but there we have it there maybe if his hair wasn't as flat to his face and kind of flared out a little bit i think it could look a little bit better there's some nice shading in the hair to bring out some of the details which is a nice touch um there but we have the thunder punch uh armor in there it looks like it gets a little bit of shading um like a little bit of a wash over here over the shoulder straps uh nowhere else well I guess the lower straps does get a little bit too, but really nowhere else as it's just a bright orange color uh, here on the back. And again, this opens up and I, again, I just don't really know what the gimmick is. You guys will have to let me know what that gimmick is. If it's throwback to a toy again, which I assume um, same kind of thing here. I can unpeg that if I wanted to, and I can have it all removed uh, the same here for these arm pieces. If I wanted to, I could pop that out and I'm sure I could remove it. Um, we do get a little bit of uh, shading in there, which is kind of interesting on those spots that there and then here on the back um, as well um, good sculpted detail on the body itself which is nice we get a bicep swivel on this guy Beastman does not have a bicep swivel unfortunately we get the loincloth type look it has this patina type look in there with some little bit of coloring uh, which is nice um, there's some shading in the fur to kind of bring out the texture details which is nice um, his muscle his muscle definition there's shading throughout the whole thing over the skin tone which is really nice because it helps highlight the details of it uh, the boots look really good really good paintwork on the boots to kind of bring out the weathering and the kind of the design in there so that is pretty awesome again there's the uh, the thunder punch uh, effect piece on there and that is really nice uh, he does have his sword here as you can see there it's just kind of this gold color with the the hilt is kind of wrapped uh there we have this shield piece um and again i don't know kind of how this works like you can put the shield on here and it like turns i don't know it, again the original toy there must have been a gimmick or something to go along with it because i mean i'm not getting it i'm not seeing it but i mean you guys let me know if there was supposed to be something to it but you could do that if you wanted to um but i'm not really seeing how it could kind of really work out but there is He-Man. Again, looks looks really good. Uh, the hair, just a little flat, and I think it flared out. It'd probably look a little bit better. Uh, but here we have Skeletor, the big bad. Skeletor is pretty ugly, and I think he's supposed to be ugly, right? But he is, like, ugly, ugly. Look at the bright green on there. Um, the, the paint on the head sculpt is really nice. Like, the green, there's some dark colors in there. His teeth get this yellow color in there. It looks gross. And then his eyes are red and just comes out looking really really nice in there uh his jaw is even articulated so look at that you can open up his jaw there that is pretty nice he's got this nice shiny purple hood to it with some texture on there feels very rubbery but i really like the way it came out looking looking at his staff and that looks really good this nice metallic purple color um on there really nice looking the whole staff is purple there um again and again he just comes with extra hands uh, but you know, we'll take a look at the throne afterwards, but yeah, Skeletor looking really good. Um, he's got some shading throughout his skin tone as well. So it looks like a light blue. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to picture in my head. I think light blue is the skin tone and then the shading is going to be the dark blue. It, initially I wanted to be like, oh, the shading is going to be the, the lighter color, but that wouldn't really make sense. Right. But I'm looking at it. I'm like, ah, oh, it's hard to tell. But like this right hand looks more, looks like a darker blue compared to the lighter blue of like the rest of the figure and the other hands. So I'm a little confused, but good shading kind of throughout there. His armor pieces look really good. Nice metallic purple with some nice gold in there. Just comes out looking really, really nice. Um, and then he's got his fabric soft goods cape. Let me zoom out. 
there. There's a couple of cuts in it to kind of give it a little bit of a tattered look. Uh, but this kind of just drapes over the figure, as you can see there. So you got this harness uh, piece. It just sits on over. It doesn't peg anywhere. It doesn't do anything like that. But it can kind of sit nicely um, in there. Uh, but without it, you have just kind of the standard Skeletor look, I would say. Um, but, you know, the hood just doesn't kind of go uh, with a cloak or anything. But that looks really good. Either way. Um, he does not have a sword, even though right there... Um, it looks like he can sheath a sword, and that might be, you know, with a different Skeletor figure. Uh, because I don't know, I don't have any of the prior ones, so I'm not, I'm not really familiar with that. But I, I would imagine that that's what they have. Uh, the new Eternia version of Skeletor has released before. I, I'm sorry, I can't do a comparison with the original to kind of see what that's about. But again. Um, with this video, it's all about appreciating some good figures. Um, so lots of really cool things to look at here. Nice purple and gold. But right there, that gem, whatever that is, it has this nice pearlescent, like silvery color. It looks like it's got a little pink in there. It's done really nice. The paintwork on these figures are just fantastic. I mean, so good looking at it kind of throughout. And then just look at like He-Man's boots. Look at the detail on there. It's just so good. So lots of really good things going on with the Masters of the Universe, uh, Masterverse figure. So all the good things that I've heard, I see it, and yeah, can confirm they are correct. These are really good figures. So let's check out the articulation now. Okay, so let's go through the articulation. Beastman's not going to be able to really do a whole lot of looking up or anything like that because the way his beard and everything is, it's just not going to work out. And you can pop the head off and his neck looks really small, but it's all completely hidden away with the way his hair is in there. And it's kind of hollow in there. It's kind of crazy looking, but let's go ahead and pop that on. You could swivel it around and kind of do some stuff like that. The arm, you can get the shoulder to go straight on out there. The shoulder armor can move around so it doesn't really get in the way. Um, you could do a full rotation if you want to. The armor is, itself is not going to do that there's no bicep swivel on this guy unfortunately there's only a single jointed elbow so you get um, 90 degree bend there the wrists swivel and they do hinge standard horizontal hinge on all of the hands let me confirm that yes standard horizontal hinge on all of the hands uh, we get a diaphragm cut on this guy so you can actually get him to tilt to his left that much so that is really good you can get him to tilt to his right that much which is really good as well leaning back is not going to do a whole lot and then coming forward is not going to do a whole lot so that's not even necessarily the armor that's uh, hindering that articulation there's just not a lot that he's going to be able to do in there and then you get a swivel at the waist the diaphragm i'm sure would be able to get a little bit of swivel but with the armor piece it's kind of hard to get that to kind of work in there uh, we do get some drop down hips so you can drop the legs down that far you can do uh, all, almost the full splits there he can kick forward very uh, far which is good the leg doesn't really go back you got an upper thigh cut in there a little stiff double jointed pinless knees uh, so nice bend there at the knee uh, you get a boot swivel in there foot hinges down uh, a little bit the boot itself kind of gets in the way uh, hinge up a little bit the boot just kind of gets in the way you got nice ankle pivot and peg holes at the bottom of the feet so that is beast man let's go ahead and jump on over to he-man here um and he-man's going to have more points of articulation mainly like i guess the bicep swivel uh his head is on a dumbbell joint so he's not really going to be able to look up unfortunately but he can look down uh there you get a full swivel uh, at the neck the arm you can get to go straight on out you get a full rotation in there you got the upper bicep swivel which I like. Uh, you get a double jointed elbow uh, with this harness piece on there. You're only going to get 90 degrees um, in there. So just a heads up on that. Wrists swivel and they do hinge. Standard horizontal hinge on all the, oh, nope, the grip hands. The one grip hand for the right has a vertical hinge. The others all have the standard horizontal hinge uh, on them. So be aware of that. Uh, diaphragm cut on He-Man. We can get him to tilt to his left that much. We can get him to tilt to his right that much there. He can lean back a little bit there, a little bit of gap. Uh, and then coming forward is very little, as you can see there. Swivel at the diaphragm and then swivel at the waist. Uh, you get the drop down hip, so you can drop the hip down, as you can see standard and then drop down uh you can do the full full splits on there he can kick forward very high uh leg goes back a fair amount as well you got an upper thigh cut in there double jointed pinless knee very good bend uh there uh, all, also the elbows are pinless as well boot swivel in there foot hinges all the way down you get hinge up you kind of have to work it with the boot but you can hinge up a little bit ankle pivot peg holes at the bottom of the feet so good articulation for he-man it's just you know crunching forwards a little bit tough but you know if you use with like the uh the hips you can kind of get him down uh, a fair amount looking at skeletor 
Uh, Skeletor's head is on a dumbbell joint as well. Remember, we got the articulated jaw, so he can open up his mouth, he can close it, he can move his head side to side, you get some pivot going on in there. But looking up is only going to be that much, looking down is only going to be that much there. The shoulder, um, I think, think um, a lot of these use some of the same parts. So it looks like he's got the same torso. He definitely has thinner legs, though. But the torso itself uh, looks similar. It may not be the same, but let's go ahead and go through it. Shoulder you can get to go straight on out. You get a full rotation in there. Watch out for these armor pieces. I probably shouldn't have done that, but you can work it. Upper bicep swivel, double jointed uh, pinless elbow. Gives you that much bend there at the elbow. Really nice. Wrist swivel and they do hinge. Standard horizontal hinge on all of the hands that he comes with. Diaphragm cut on there so Skeletor can tilt to his left that much. He can tilt to his right that much there. He can lean back very, very little. Basically nothing at all. He can come forward basically nothing at all so opportunities there in getting him to move forward swivel at that diaphragm cut but there's oh there's ah waist swivel there we go it was a little stuck so we got the waist swivel in there as well uh it feels like skeletor does not have drop down hips so yeah no drop down hips for skeletor that's kind of interesting legs go out that far apart he can kick forward that far there uh, leg doesn't really go back a whole lot, just a little bit. You got an upper thigh cut in there. Uh, double jointed pinless knee gives you that much bend uh, there at the knee. There is no, uh, oh, there is a boot swivel, excuse me, boot swivel in there. Um, you also get really good movement on the ankle in terms of pivot, uh, but doesn't really hinge down much and doesn't really hinge up very much the way the ankle is designed. So that's a little tough, but you do have peg holes at the bottom of the feet there. So um, pretty good articulation. It's just, you know, with diaphragm cuts, it's hard for some of these companies, especially the domestic companies to give us really good um, crunches, you know, forward and then back isn't as important, but, you know, getting, getting some characters to crunch forward is a big opportunity and the same kind of goes for here but the rest of the figure moves really nice okay holy moly there is a lot going on here we have one two three bags we get this bone piece uh there wrapped in paper we get a couple of different bone pieces kind of loose um, around we get some fur going on in there we got the staff in here we got the backdrop we have the pedestal that the throne is on and then we got an instruction booklet here on what everything comes with as you can see here um, and then all the instructions on how to put this bad boy together. Oh, and look at that. It's, so it sits on top of the box. Like, this is just crazy. So let's go ahead and get into it. At first, I'm going to see if I have some AAA batteries so I can get this thing all lit up. So uh, hopefully I do. I did not think uh, about getting batteries. So hopefully I got them. Okay, so there's a whole lot of pieces to this. I'm not gonna build it on camera. I'll follow the instructions, so if you guys need help, you would have an instruction booklet that'll walk you through exactly how to piece it together, uh, but I am not gonna do that. But what I wanna show you guys here is if I turn down some of the lights, um, you can see the light up, the LEDs in there. So that'll be kind of nice. They kind of have this flicker effect to it. So once we have it all together, I'll have the lights dim so we can see exactly how it all looks together. So um, here we go. Next, you'll see the thing will be completely assembled and put together. Okay, so this is the only way that I can get the throne in the frame. So it sits on the box that it came in fully assembled with that backdrop piece in there. I can't show you guys... Um, unfortunately, kind of how it looks on the pedestal of the box, you know, it's, it's, it's all on there. I can't give you guys the full look because I just, I can't get it in frame. There's no way, uh, for me to do it, but just know that it is really, really, really cool. It's just awesome. The display piece that it has when you put it together like this, just really cool. We'll get in for a closer look at some of the details of the throne. I'm going to have to take it off the box. so You won't have the backdrop to go along with it. So just kind of a heads up on that. I will turn off the lights. Um, so you could my lights. So then you could see how these, this thing lights up. Like there's a button here and these light up, which you're not really going to be able to see right now. Um, yeah, that's not, that's not really going to work. And then this thing changes lights to a bunch of different colors. Um, and it'll shut off on its own. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and kind of do that. Let's take a look at it to see how cool it is. I'm going to take some pictures, all of that. We'll take a closer look at the throne. Okay, so I know this is a terrible view. It's really dark, but I want to show you guys the colors. So here we have kind of this flickering green. And again, the lights change color. So if I hit that again, now we're on to a blue color. Look at that dark blue. Really, really nice. And I love the flicker effect to actually give it like true flame type look to it, which is really cool. Let's 
hit that again. And then we go to kind of a pinkish as we move a little bit to an orange. It's more of a pinkish. It's not very bright as you can see there. So it doesn't really look like too bright of uh, flames. We get this green here. I feel like the fire one should be a little bit brighter. I don't know why that one isn't as bright, but like the green and the blue are a whole lot brighter, but the orange is not quite as bright. Now, let's see if I turn this light off. How do we, how are we looking? Now, it's still a little light. It's definitely brighter when you see it in front of you, uh, but definitely on camera, it's not coming off as bright, unfortunately, but the other colors, again, are, are much brighter. So it's kind of weird how that ended up working out. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys the back of the back, the back of the back, the back of the backdrop. Um, so you guys could see kind of the design that they actually put on there and then kind of along with the box too. Uh, just looks really cool and kind of scary looking. Um, and then when you kind of turn it around, you have the inside to kind of the, the, the back of the throne room there. Um, these pieces, like you have to fold the pieces to get them in. Uh, not going to be an easy thing to get that backdrop out. So it's kind of when you set it up, it's kind of a one and done. And the instructions actually specifically state that some of these pieces that you put on there are basically a one and done. Like it's a one time only that you install it. Um, and I don't think it's going to come apart nicely or easily. Um, so you're going to want to be careful with that. So just a heads up. But let's go ahead and get in for a closer look at the throne before we close out this video. Okay, so we're gonna have to kind of start a segments kind of going over this throne. So we have this like skull uh, piece on here and this actually can articulate around because um, it's just kind of on there with a ball peg. So it can kind of move around um, and everything. And one thing about the bone throne is it has really good paint apps that actually makes it look like it's bone um, constructing this whole entire thing. So I really like uh, the way that looks. Uh, looking at the back, if we pull that up, again, some of these pieces like this back piece there, it's kind of a one one time uh, only where you install that because it actually says on the back like one time only so I don't think it's something where you're going to be able to pull this apart nicely you know they're pretty thin so some of these things could probably snap so you want to be careful and don't want to do it like these snake pieces here that hold the two scepters like those are not <laughs> those also say one time use um, at one time install and then the flame pieces where the lights are those also say one time these are made of rubber here So it's kind of interesting. It looks good You know, it still gets the paint and the texture detail to make it look bone Um, it is a little bit shinier since it is rubber. So just a heads up on that You know, you're not gonna like crutch yourself or scratch yourself or anything like that uh, but yeah, the details of the throne, really nice. Uh, the bottom rock portion, it's all purple. It's dark purple. It is a little shiny. So it'd be nice if it was more matte, um, be then it wouldn't shine so much. But it's really cool. You know, the texture of it's really nice. Whoops, there goes Skeletor. We got the button hidden kind of in there to, so you could switch out the lights and everything. The fur padding for the seat, it kind of secures itself in the throne. So that's not going to fall off or anything like that. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's really nice. Um... Really cool looking. So nice uh, details on the texture of it. And then Skeletor sits on there, you know, nicely. He doesn't, he can't, oh, you know what? I didn't even realize. Silly, silly me. And I don't know if you guys can see this. There are pegs right down there. So you would be able to peg his feet. So he's going to stay on there. So just like I had him like fall off, uh, probably not the best way to do it. Let me secure those feet down in there. And boom, he ain't going nowhere. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So he's now, Skeletor is now secure in his throne. He's just chilling, he's relaxing. Uh, boom, so really nice. Okay, so that is my review of these Mattel Masterverse, Masters of the Universe figures. The 1987 movie Beast Man, the Thunder Punch He-Man, and the Skeletor uh, with the Havoc Throne or Bone Throne. Uh, these two are New Eternia. Again, the Beastman was the 1987 movie. You guys let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of the Mattel Masters of the Universe Master Verse action figure line? Let me know which one, which, which figures are some of the highlights for you in terms of the line. Uh, I'm curious. There's some really cool looking ones out there, but you guys let me know down in the comments below which ones are your favorite, uh, which ones you guys think are the best. Maybe I will be picking some of these up. Um, kind of as I go along with my collecting journey. I definitely wanted to dip my toes in um, and see how the figures work because everyone is saying such good things and I can absolutely see it. There's some awesome things going on here. The sculpt work is really nice on these guys. Um, the paint work is absolutely amazing. Some of the best paint. You won't get a lot of the shading and things like that on other action figures lines. <coughs> Marvel, Marvel Legends. Right? You're not going to get that on those 
Um, so th that is a big plus and highlight. So you guys let me know down in the comments below your favorite of the Masterverse line. What do you think of the new Eternia stuff? My understanding is that that's kind of Mattel's new take on the Masters of the Universe characters. Um, and to me, I think they look pretty good. But you guys let me know down in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out BigBadToyStore.com for all your action figure needs. He-Man, Beast-Man, and Skeletor with the Bone Throne, Havoc Throne, um, is, are currently in stock right now. So links in the video description below for uh, these figures. As well as all the Mattel Masterverse Masters of the Universe.